Hello everybody, my name is Griffin and you're listening to the Command Valley. Today we have an exciting upgrade video from the Ruthless Regiment Commander 20 deck and I'm going to be going through it with you and telling you what cards I took out, what cards I'm going to put in, and a little bit of why I'm putting those in. Before I begin, I just want to let you guys know that we are releasing content a lot this month and next month with the release of C20 and the release of Ikoria. There's a lot of commanders that we want to present for you guys. So please make sure you like this video, subscribe and share it with your friends. It really does mean a lot to us and it's a, it's a small way to support the, the podcast. And also thank you to GameGrid Lehigh, our sponsor for this podcast. If you are in the Utah County area, please check them out. The link is in the description below. They have the best customer service, an amazing selection of cards, deck boxes, Dungeons & Dragons accessories, and lots of board games. So please check them out. Show them your love. We really appreciate them. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. So again, we are covering the Ruthless Regiment deck from the C20 Commander Precons. And the commander of the Ruthless Regiment deck is Jarena Kudro. Jarena is one red, white, black for a 3 3 legendary creature human soldier. When Jarena Kudro enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 white human creature soldier token for each time you've cast a commander from the command zone this game. And she also reads other humans you control get plus 2 plus 0. Oh. So, as you can probably already tell, this deck is very much centered around going wide we really want to have a lot of humans we want to pump them up we want to make even more humans and just get that advantage of just swinging in early with a lot of humans getting that buff from Jarena is not small plus two plus oh can help us finish the game so Jarena is really cool and i'm very excited to go through with you guys and to let you know what i took out and what i put in so first i'm going to go on with the creatures that i took out and the creatures that i put in I did find with most upgrade deck techs, I don't take out as many cards. Jarena had a lot of cards that were suboptimal and not human. So we wanna make sure that we have as many humans in the creature slot as we possibly can. So here are a couple of the cards that I took out. Calvary, Pegasus, Humble Defector, Kelsey and the Plague, Zathrid Necromancer, Capturbating Crew, Fireflux Squad, Frontier Warmonger, Magus of the Disc, Riders of Gavany, Trin, and Savar, Titan Hunter, and Titan of Eternal Fire. I'm not going to go into too much detail about why I took these cards out. I feel it's more important for me to tell you guys why I'm putting cards in. Just know that these cards in my mind were suboptimal. I felt that there were better slots and better purposes for these cards. I also took both of the commanders, both Kelsey and Trin and Savar. I don't think that they help this strategy all that much. I know that Trin and Savar have a little bit of synergy with humans, but not enough for me to validate having them in this deck. If we want to make this deck the best that we can, we're going to take out the cards that are suboptimal for the most optimal cards. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the creatures that I put in. First up, we have Micaeus the Lunark. For one white and X, he comes in with X plus one plus one counters, and you can put a plus one plus one counter on Micaeus by tapping him. You can also tap him to remove a plus one plus one counter and put a one one counter on each other creature you control. This goes perfect in our strategy. He is a human, so he gets that buff. He also can buff up our whole team, and he can do that consistently throughout the game. So he's gonna help assist us really well in our strategy. Fiend Hunter, one white white for one three when he enters the battlefield, exile another target creature until it leaves the battlefield. We do have one of these effects in the deck already. I just wanted to add another one because this is a very useful tool to have in this deck. We want to make sure that we have interaction removal and I didn't feel that there was quite enough in this deck. So put Fiend Hunter in. We have Archetype of Courage, one white white for a two two. Creatures you control a first strike and creatures your opponents control lose first strike and can't have first strike. Because Jarena buffs our creatures plus two plus O, oh, that means they have high attack but may not have necessarily high defense. By giving them first strike, we alleviate that worry about having low defense because the more that we buff up their attack, the less we're worried. This incentivizes our opponents not to block, makes their blocks even worse, and can get a lot of extra damage through. So yeah, I wouldn't underestimate having that first strike. We have Grand Abolisher, one white, one white for a two, two. During your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. This is going to be extremely useful. That makes sure that on our turn, nothing that we have is going to get countered, removed. That means if we cast Jarena, optimally when we have a lot of humans out, 
nobody can interact with our board on that turn. So we have immunity on our turn to be able to swing out and not feel that we're gonna get hit back because of some hidden spell that's gonna come our way. Mother of Runes, one white for a one one creature human cleric. She can tap to give target creature control protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. The reason I put Mother of Runes in here is because we do have a couple of humans like Micaeus, like Jarena, and some other ones we're going to cover that we want to protect more than others. With Mother of Runes also being a human means that any triggers off of the humans we're going to get, and it can also make sure that we get protection from any color that we choose. So any removal spell, any creature that we're blocking, any creature that we're attacking into, we can give it protection, make sure we can protect our creatures. We have Onware Militia Captain, which is one and a white for a two, two at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control four more creatures, transform Hanwar Militia Captain. And then she transforms into Westvale Cult Leader. She is a star star. Westville cult leader's power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control. And at the beginning of your M step, put a 1-1 one, one white and black human cleric creature token onto the battlefield. So this is a nice cheap creature. We are gonna have a lot of creatures out early. And so this is just an engine that we can get started getting as many humans onto the battlefield as we can. Remember, all of these tokens may be 1-1s one, right now, but we have a lot of pump effects, including Jarena, that are gonna make sure that at the later parts of the game, they're gonna be a big threat. We have Champion of the Parish, one white for 1-1. One, one. Whenever another human enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Champion of the Parish. This is a really good first turn starter. We're gonna be playing a lot of humans, so Champion of the Parish is gonna get really, really big, and it's gonna be a good blocker, a good attacker, while we're still trying to set up our board. We have General Kudra of Dranith from the new Ikoria set. One white black for a 3-3 three, three legendary creature human. Other humans you control get plus one plus one. And whether a General Kudra of Dranith or another human enters the battlefield under your control, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. Then for two generic, we can sacrifice two humans and destroy target creature with power four or greater. This gives us some flexibility. We're gonna have a lot of human tokens, so we can use those humans tokens to get rid of big creatures that are gonna get in our way. Any team buffs that affect our humans in any way are ones that I've considered including. We have so many options, but this is just one of the ones that I feel add just a little bit more to this deck. Next up, we've got Mentor of the Meek. For two and a white, we have a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one if you do draw a card. Mentor of the Meek is a really good draw engine, especially because we're creating so many small tokens, and also most of our humans aren't even above that two power range. So as long as we have some extra mana, Mentor of the Meek is gonna ensure that we have cards in our hand. And finally, one of the non-human creatures that I have validated for this deck is Angel of Glory's Rise. She is five white white for a four six flying angel. When Angel of Glory's Rise enters the battlefield, exile all zombies, then return all human creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Angel of Glory's Rise is a really good way to be able to throw yourself back in the later game if you just can't seem to get enough tokens to be able to power your opponents out early and your board has been wiped a couple of times, Angel of Glory's Rise assures that we can get all of that advantage back and just keep on swinging. So here are my four honorable mentions. These are cards that I have thought about putting in, but I didn't put it in. I, I'm not quite convinced that they don't belong in the deck, but I'm just a little bit, I'm a little bit iffy about them. So let me just present them to you guys and see if you like them, definitely put them in, in your version of Jarena. We have Intrepid Hero, two and a white for a one, one human soldier. You can tap him to destroy target creatures, power four or greater. It's super useful to be able to remove creatures. However, he is three mana for a one, one, and he is likely to get removed and not stick around. So I was a little bit iffy about that. We have Baird, Steward of Argive, two white white for a 2-4 legendary creature human soldier with vigilance that, that taxes your opponent's creatures for attacking you or planeswalkers you control. As much as I do like taxing my opponents for attacking me, there's a lot better four drop slots that we can have in this deck. I really want things that are going to make tokens or refill my hand at this point. And then finally, we have Judith the Scourge Diva. And this one's interesting. She is one black red for a 2-2. Other creatures you control get plus one plus zero. When another, another non-token creature you control dies, Judith the Scourge Diva deals one damage to any target. Now, I thought about this one for probably the longest. I like the buff that she gives to our creatures. And I also like that when another non-token creature dies, we can ping something so we can get some extra damage in there. However, I, I even though she is a human, I feel like there are better pump effects and I'd probably rather them be enchantments than creatures because creatures can be removed pretty easily, more so than enchantments. Let's go ahead and move on to the non-creatures. First off, I did decide to take out the Nahiri that is included in this deck. 
I, I, I really love Nahiri. I love her character, and this card is is very cool. I like discarding cards and drawing cards. It gives you a little bit of advantage, but I honestly think that this is not the place for her if we want this deck to be as optimal as it can be. Instead, I have swapped her out for Gideon, ally of Zendikar. The reason why is because Gideon, as soon as he comes out, we can already use his minus ability to be able to get us the emblem. I'll go ahead and read him out for you guys so you know what I'm talking about. He has two white white for a four Laurel Sea Planeswalker, Plus one until in return, he becomes a 5-5 human soldier ally creature with indestructible that's still a planeswalker and prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. Already, he's considered a human, so our buffs that affect humans will be able to benefit him. For zero, you can put a 2-2 white knight ally creature token onto the battlefield. Now, it's not a human. It is still a token, so it will get some buffs, but it won't get buffed by Jirina. However, for minus four, you get an emblem with creatures you control and get plus one, plus one. The reason I really like Gideon in this deck is because he can do something the turn he comes out. Worst comes to worst, we just use the minus four straight away, send him to the graveyard, but we have an emblem that cannot be interacted with that gives our team a buff. We can also plus him up, give him indestructible, hope he lives, and the next turn, if he's at five, we can minus four, start at one, and start the process over again. That's the only Planeswalker that was in this deck, and that's the only Planeswalker I've decided to put in. So let's go ahead and move on to the enchantments. In the enchantment slot, I have taken out all of the impetus enchantments. It's the enchantments that go to creature. I don't love that these enchantments don't really do much for us, especially because we want them to, it's pushing us to put these enchantments on other people's creatures, but we can't assure that those creatures are gonna stick around. I'd much rather have an enchantment that's gonna buff our team or is guaranteed to do something for us. I've also taken out Molten Echoes, Vigilant Justice, and Outpost Siege. Now, I really do like Outpost Siege. However, since we have black in our commander's color identity, we have better options than Outpost Siege for card draw. And I'll get to that in a second. Some of the enchantments that I have put into this deck. First off, we have Oblivion Ring, two and a white for an enchantment that exiles another non-land permanent until a ring leaves the battlefield. Just like Feed Hunter, I wanna make sure that we have some removal in this deck. And we definitely wanna have removal that hits not just creatures, but non-land permanents. So we have more flexibility and we have more options. We have Honor of the Pure, one in a white, white creatures you control get plus one plus one. 100% of the tokens that we are making are going to be white. So they're going to be affected by this buff. Jirena is also white and most of our creatures have white in them. So this is going to be really good two drop enchantment for us. We have Dictate of Heliod, three white white for a flash enchantment. Creatures you control get plus two plus two. I really like Dictate of Heliod. Even though it is three white white, so that's a little bit expensive to have an enchantment, but it has flash. And the reason why I like this is because this can be a combat trick. There are times that I have used Dictate of Heliod to win the game. Swinging out with my team, they calculate the damage. They're like, okay, I can take this much. And then I flash out Dictate of Heliod and suddenly they're dead. And plus two, plus two to your whole team. That's a lot. If we just have a Dictate of Heliod out and we have five tokens with Jarena, they're all five threes. That's a lot. Outlaw's Merriment, one red, white, white for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one at random. Create a red and white creature token with these characteristics. A 3-1 human warrior with trample and haste. A 2-1 human cleric with lifelink and haste. And a 1-2 human rogue with haste. And when this creature enters the battlefield, deals one damage to any target. This is a nice four mana enchantment that assures that we're going to get a human out onto the battlefield every single turn. We're not going to be able to choose which one that we get. However, they are still human, so they are going to be pumped by Jarena. So I, I like this card. I like that it assures that we can get a creature out each turn. And then we have Cather's Crusade. For three white white, we have an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. If any of you have seen Cather's Crusade, it can get nuts really, really fast. So this is going to be an all-star in this deck because we're going to be creating a lot of tokens. We're going to be play, playing a lot of humans. So this is going to make sure that we have just a massive, big, buffed human army. Also for enchantments, we have Phyrexian Arena, which is one black black for an enchantment that says at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life and you draw a card. This is the kind of card draw that I like. It assures that we're going to be able to draw cards. It's not conditional. Just at the beginning of your upkeep, we lose life and we draw a card. Drawing two cards every turn, that's, that's a good place to be. And then lastly, this is definitely up to you. This card is pretty expensive. Anointed Procession is three and a white for an enchantment that doubles all the tokens that we're making, but it is expensive. If you have the budget to put this in, I would definitely recommend putting this in. All right, next up we have the spells. Here are the spells, the instants and sorceries that I've taken out. Dire Tactics, Unexpectedly Absent, and Crackling Doom. Now the reason why I'm taking out a removal spell is even though it is a nice two mana exile target creature, 
I would much rather have uh, open-ended options because we are in Mardu, so we have a lot of options to be able to get rid of and exile anything that we want, any non-land permanent. Utter End, Vindicate, Despark are a couple of good options to replace Dire Tactics. You can do any one of those. You can do two of them. If you really want to put three of them in there, go for it. I would recommend putting in Utter End because it is an instant. You can exile a non-land permanent. Gives you a lot more flexibility. Other spells that I have put in here, we have Launch the Fleet for one white. We have a Sorcery with Strive. Launch the Fleet costs one more to cast for each target beyond the first. Until end of turn, any number of target creatures each game, whenever this creature attacks, put a 1-1 white soldier creature token onto the battlefield tapped in attacking. Now this doesn't create us humans, but this does create us a lot of tokens if we have the mana for it. I do love things that give us tokens. We have a lot of pumps that affect everything, not just our humans, so I don't mind having this one mana sorcery in here. We have Vandal Blast, one red for a sorcery, destroy target artifact you don't control, and it's got overload for four and a red. Kindred Dominance for five black black, choose a creature type, destroy all creatures that aren't of the chosen type, an auto include in any tribal deck that's playing black. We have Collective Effort, one white white for a sorcery with Escalate, so tap and untap creature you control, and then you can use more than one mode. Choose one or more, destroy target creature with power four or greater, destroy target enchantment, and put a plus one plus one counter on each creature target player controls. So a really flexible card we guaranteed 99% of the time we're going to be able to use all three of these modes if we have targets for them. We have Dusk Till Dawn, and this one I want to spend a little bit of time on. It's two white white for a sorcery, destroy all creatures with power three or greater, and also has the aftermath that says return all creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to your hand. Now the reason why I want to sit on this for a little bit is in one of the creatures that I took out was Magus of the Disc. And these are both board wipes, but the reason why I like Dusk better is because Magus of the Disc affects us very hard. If we're going to destroy all creatures, artifacts, and enchantments, it's going to destroy ours as well. I would much rather have a board wipe in this deck that benefits us. So things like Cringe of Dominance, which we can choose which tribe doesn't get destroyed, and things like Dusk, which destroy all creatures with power 3 or greater, and Citywide Bust, which is already in this deck, assures that even though we have small creatures, we can still wipe the board by destroying all creatures with power 3 or greater with Dusk, or 4 or greater with Citywide Bust. We have Repel the Abominable, which is 1 and a white for an instant, prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn by non-human sources. Normally, I don't play Fogs in my deck, because usually they don't work out the way I want them to. Repel the Abominable says by non-human creatures. So that means we can protect our creatures, we can assure that they can attack without worry, we can defend from a big onslaught that's coming our way. There's a lot of flexibility with this card, I really like it. And lastly, we have one that's a little bit up there, last time I checked it was about around $10, is Disrupt Decorum, it's two red red for a sorcery, goad all creatures you don't control. This is a really, really good card to put in this deck because with all the creatures that we have, we want to make sure that we're attacking into a player with no open creatures. And the best way to do that is with a Disrupt Decorum. It ensures that all of our opponent's creatures are attacking each other, so life totals are going down, and it gives us the opportunity to swing in for the win. Lastly, I want to talk about the artifacts that I have removed from this deck. I have removed Sanctuary Blade, Bonder's Ornament, and Heirloom Blade. Now the the two artifacts that I've included in here are Door of Destinies, which is four mana for an artifact. As Door of Destinies enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, put a charge counter on Door of Destinies, and creatures you control of the chosen type gets plus one plus one for each charge counter on Door of Destinies. This card, if it sticks around, is going to go the distance for us. We're going to be casting a lot of humans, and the majority of our deck is just humans. So it, you could see Door of Destinies having six charge counters on it and giving all of our humans plus six plus six. At that point, we might not even need Jarena to swing out. I also have Sunforger in here, which is an artifact equipment for three mana. Equipped creature gets plus four, plus zero. And for a red and white, unattached Sunforger, search your library for a red or white instant card with converted mana cost four or less, and cast that card without paying its mana cost, then shuffle your library, and equips for three. The reason why I really like Sunforger is because this can get our removal spells from our library and we can cast them. So it's instant speed, so we can do it at any time. We can get our D sparks, terminates, utter ends. Really, really useful. The more instant removal and card jar you have in here, the better that this gets. All right, guys, that's about all I have for you for Jarena. Uh, I know there was a lot of things that were taken out and we put a lot of things in, but I really feel like these cards are going to be better for you than the cards that were already in there. Not that they weren't good in the deck already. I just feel like if we want to make this deck as powerful and strong as we, it can be, then these are the cards that I would recommend putting in. 
This is not an extensive list. I'm sure I've missed a couple of things. So please, if you have recommendations for this deck, leave them in the comments. I want to see them. It helps a lot of people out when they see it too. So please let us know what you think and what you thought about this video. Once more, please stay tuned this month. We have so many deck techs and so many upgrade videos coming out for you guys. We're super excited to share them with you. We're already working on a couple with all the companions that have come out. I'm super excited to get started on building them. I know the standard and well, pretty much every other format is not loving the companions, but commander, man, we like, we like commanders. So super excited to build those for you guys. All right, that's all I have for you. So thanks so much for watching. Please remember to like this video, subscribe, helps out our little family here at the Command Valley. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you later.